So first of all, this is pretty sacred space for country music. And I know you were on this stage before. What's it like to be here on this stage? Well, I mean, this is like I, I think I said the, the day they put me in here that this was for a country singer and songwriter. It's just top of the mountain. <laughs> That's what it is. It's hard to believe that I'm part of this. Yeah. And it does, there's something about walking in here where you can feel that. You can feel like that it's almost the holy place for country music. When you were little, did you always want to do this? Could you imagine, you know, being in the Hall of Fame and, and having all these years performing? Oh, no way. I had no idea. I just grew up, you know, real rural and in, uh, in a small town. And uh, I, I really didn't have any thoughts of even singing or or uh, how you could even do that, you know. I, there wasn't a lot of live music around our little town, and this kind of church stuff is what I grew up on. Mm -hmm. I read um, something you just said in an interview that I liked so much. You said you love performing because you can hear everybody singing your music, and this is your quote. You said, you know that your music has really touched people. Yeah, that's, that's true. I, I've never been a... a you know, a real want to be in the spotlight kind of performer. I'm more of a singer-songwriter guy, and and uh, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, so I've been everywhere a hundred, hundred times, and uh, it, you know, it gets to be a job and a routine, and sometimes you feel like a machine, but you know, it never fails when you walk out there and have a good crowd, and they're, you know, one lady's holding up a sign that this is her 33rd concert she's been to, and. Another one, little boy, this tall, says this is our first, holding up a sign, this is my first concert. And then they're holding up signs of different songs that have meant something in, in their life, you know, and from living on love. And then, of course, the, where were you? People, you know, I look out there and people are crying. And the, yeah, there's a lot, of, you know, and there's a lot of fun, fun songs too. And five o'clock somewhere in Chattahoochee, <laughs> come on, everybody's having a big time. So I, I've always done, uh, the country music to me has always been just a, uh, you know, uh, a mixture of everything from mm -hmm. heart. It, it, most songs are about love or heartache, but, uh, or, you know, when, but uh, it, country's always had everything in between, fun songs and songs about your, all about your life. And that's what I've sung about and written about in my whole career. And that's one of the things I like the most about mm -hmm. country yeah. music. So when you walk out there and see people affected by your music, it's endearing. It means something. Yes. Well, I mean, you don't know it, but our my third date with my husband <laughs> was singing along to your music. Uh -huh. And I was like, okay, he's probably a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> well, really? I might have to marry him. And I did. And, you know, when we listened to Remember When, oh, the, yeah. the thought of falling in love and hearing the little feet, you know, in the mm -hmm. hallway now that we have little kids. Yes, ma'am. It means something. Yep, it's a lot of a lot of life in, in some of those songs that I've written but, uh, that I've experienced along the way. And, and you've been married for 40 plus years. 40 plus something, yeah. <laughs> Have three grown kids. Yes, ma'am. So when you write about them, it must mm. be extra meaningful. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen my music, you know, follow all, all the different chapters of my life and uh, it's like this new album. There's a song on there I wrote from my mama when she passed away a couple of years ago, and, and then I wrote one on there when uh, my first daughter got married. They, uh, Maddie, she asked me about uh, the father-daughter dance, you know, and uh, if I'd write a song, and I said, well, I'll, I'll try to write something. That's tough, but uh, I said, but if I write something, I told all three of the girls, this is this is the one for all three of y'all's wedding. I don't want to have to write three of them. So I did, and we've used it for Maddie's wedding and then uh, for my middle daughter, Allie, whose uh, wedding was last uh, year. And uh, matter of fact, she's on some wedding magazine today. It just came out or something. She's on the cover with her wedding thing. It's pretty cool. And so uh, that song ended up on this album. But, you know, life always seems to... Uh, you know, bring something around that's uh, that I want to write about that makes sense, and that a lot of times it it's uh, a subject that other people uh, have lived and relate to. Yeah, is it true that you still get nervous when you get up on stage to perform? Do you still get the butterflies, or you're, you're I'm, used to it? I'm not as bad. I mean, I was pretty shy when I first 
kicked all this off, you know, and I hadn't done much in my life like that. But so I was nervous and I still am. I still am more self-conscious, I guess, than nervous. I guess I've always been that way. Just, you know, walking out there in a spotlight on you. I've never, uh, I guess some people love that, you know, I've never felt that comfortable up there. And uh, so, yeah. What do you do? How do you, how do you do, how do you face it? You just do. Yeah, I guess I've just learned to get through it, you know, and I think, uh, with music, it's somewhat easier because you you know you you know what you're going to be doing. You're singing this song. You know if you can remember the lyrics, you're you're doing. Uh, it's kind of a, a routine. But uh, you know if you had to go up there and and just talk, I don't know if I could do it as well. Yeah. 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 I feel like the music is what what brings us all together. You um, were here to talk a little bit about a recent diagnosis. Yeah. And actually, it's not recent. I've. <clears throat> uh, I've been reluctant to talk about this publicly and to my fans, but it's it's been a while and it's starting to affect my uh, performance on stage a little bit where I, I don't feel comfortable and I just wanted the fans and the public to know uh, if, they, if they've come to see me in the last few years or if they come to see me in the future, if I play anymore, you know, what's going on. I don't want them to think I'm drunk on stage because I'm having problems with, with mobility and uh, balance and I have this uh, neuropathy, a neurological disease. It's a genetic that I inherited from my daddy. It's called CMT, ironically enough, because CMT was the big, yes. big part of my career. <laughs> I made more vi music videos than anybody in the industry, I think. But uh, anyway, uh, that's the name of it. That's abbreviation for the doctors who who discovered it, or whatever years ago. But it's a it's, it's a degenerative nerve disease that affects your nerve and muscles in your extremities, your legs, and your arms and hands, and it's. Uh, so it gets worse as it goes along and there's no cure for it and they still haven't found My daddy had it and we realize now that my grandmother had it on his side and my oldest sister is 10 years older than me has it and she doesn't get around too good now. But it's been affecting me for years and it's getting more and more obvious and I, I know I'm stumbling around on stage and now I'm having a little trouble balancing even in front of the microphone and mm -hmm. so I just feel very uncomfortable and I, I just want people to know that's why I look like I do if they're wondering and uh, I don't want to appear like some whiny celebrity. It's got some, it's not going to kill me. It's not deadly, but it, it is related like muscular dystrophy and Parkinson's disease, but it's not fatal. It's just going to disable me eventually. But uh, my daddy died in his early 70s. He could still walk a little bit, but uh, it uh, is already affecting me tremendously. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, again, I don't want to appear like yeah. I'm whining about it. I've had a wonderful, beautiful life and I've been so blessed. I can't even imagine what other people go through. This is not a condition that uh, that I would be complaining about typically, but it is going to affect me yeah. performance-wise on stage, and I don't know how much I'll continue to tour. I, I've always thought that I I never wanted to do the big retirement tour like people do and then take a year off and then come back, you know. I, I think it's kind of cheesy, but uh, <laughs> uh, I've always admired some of my heroes that, that just, you know, Merle Haggard and George and mm -hmm. Willie Nelson still playing out there at nearly 90 years old and Charlie Pride and Loretta and people just, you know, they never retire. They just play as much as they can and want to. And I always thought I'd like to do that and I, and I would like to do that if, if uh, my help will, will let me do that. Yeah. But it does not affect your voice, your ability so to write. You have a no. new album out that yes. has some beautiful uh, personal music. Thank so you're you. still going to put out music. I think I would like to, yes. I mean, I've, music's always been the most important part of it to me is songs. I mean, the songs are what, what make the artist and make the music and make make the fans uh, appreciate it. I, I think you can, there's a lot of good singers out there, but the songs are the main thing. So hopefully I can continue to write and and I'm not saying I'll, I won't be able to tour. I'll try to try to do as much as I can. So if I'm coming to your town, <laughs> we'll come. Come, come see me if you want to. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so uh, yeah, I don't want people to be sad for me at all. This is just something that uh, you know it's part of life. Denise and I've had ups and downs all through our life, and you get through it. We've been so blessed, and we're thankful, and and I'll be fine with this, and uh, just. Mainly, I just didn't want people to think I was just drunk, yes. drunk up there on stage, yes. stumbling around every night, yeah. uh, and that, that that's what's causing me to look look this way. Yeah, I mean, for somebody that doesn't really love the spotlight, yeah. how does it feel to say this out loud? 
Well, it makes me, in some ways, it's a relief because I was starting to get so self-conscious up there, you know, about stumbling around, and and, it, and I would just made me nervous up there trying to keep my balance and, and not uh, look pitiful. So it, it, I think it'll be good for, for me now to you get it out in the open. And, and uh, so if anybody's curious why I don't walk right, that's why. Mm -hmm. You know, music is such a healing force and you have a beautiful song out with your daughter maddie what was it like putting that song out there well you know she we went through the, the tough time you know with maddie and most people know the story that uh, when she got married her first husband we had a tragic accident and he died and uh and so it's it's been a lot of years of healing and getting through that well maddie ended up writing writing a book about it she's a great writer and and it's uh just a beautiful story and a faith, faithful story and a lot about healing and I think it'll be great for a lot of people to hear and and uh, she wrote one day she came to me in this piece of paper and said I wrote all wrote this song the lyrics you know and asked me to put it to music and so I wrote the melody for it and uh, it turned out to be a very sweet song and it's beautiful and they're, I guess they're going to include it somehow with her book uh, where you know you can only hear it if you you, uh, if you it comes with a book or something, I don't really know. Yeah. But yeah, but it's, it's a beautiful song, and it and it was well written for her uh, lyrically, and told her story a little more in there. And uh, so I'm anxious for my fans to get a chance to hear that too. Mm -hmm. That must have been such a difficult time for your family. Hardest, hardest. We've been through a few things over the years, but uh, you know, to see your child go through that is the hardest thing because you know your daddy always takes care of everything. And, you know, I couldn't do much about that, and but it, you know, it's been uh, we've had some time, and it's it's brought some good things as as well as the heartache along with it, and and uh, it's it's really uh, I think we've we've had a uh, good opportunity to realize how blessed we've been. You know, when we look at things like that, and and uh, it comes along, and you and you survive, and and just thankful. Mm -hmm. And to watch her uh, heal, yes. to watch her grit and resilience, you must yes. be so proud. Yes, so she's a, she's a, all my children are are special in different ways, and uh, Maddie is very very smart, and and uh, she's she is really uh, I'm surprised how well she was able to handle all that. I don't I don't I know I couldn't have, you know, done what she's done. You are one of the most legendary, I bet you don't like that word, somebody that doesn't <laughs> like the spotlight probably doesn't like it, but you are known for your beautiful songwriting. Um, is it something you still love to do? Yeah, I mean, I don't sit down every day and write, but, you know, I've, I, I hear ideas, you know, and I jot them down or make little recordings, so I do, but I, I think... You know, uh, the, the best songs usually come from something emotional, or whether it's good or or, or sad, and uh, those things come along. And when they do, it makes you want to sit down and write something. Mm -hmm. And I've had a lot of those instances in my life. Yeah, your your wife suffered with um, cancer she herself. Did. She did. And you wrote a beautiful song. Well, thank you. About that experience. Yeah, that was that was that was tough. That was a tough time as well. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Yes, I did, and luckily she got through that, and she's healthy as ever, and I'd say she'll outlive me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, I, 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 that was a scary time, and I, I did write that. That song just came out just one day right after you hear that word cancer, you know. Yeah, and to have 40 years plus of marriage yes. to have built this family, mm -hmm. uh, what, what are you most proud of? Oh, I, I'm just... As far as the marriage goes, I'm I'm proud that we've survived, and and I, I think we've we've had our ups and downs, and and I, I think now we, I feel like we're closer than we've ever been, and uh, and more comfortable with each other, and happier than we've ever been in these last few years. And, I, and of course, but my daughters are always at the top of the list to be proud of as far as my personal life. Yes. So this new album. Um, I know you took a little bit of time off when you lost your mom. Yeah, it was all between Maddie's 
husband and all that kind of came along at the same time. And I didn't feel like writing for quite a few years or, or recording you. Yeah. So when you didn't feel like writing mm -hmm. and, and now, now it feels like it's like years of that mm -hmm. heartache and, or just the time mm -hmm. in this new album, um, or at least that feels that way to me. That may not be like what it feels like to you, but you took some time and now you have this album and it seems like it's personal and um, one that you probably were waiting to write. Is that how it feels to you? I would think that's, I don't know that I had any any special vendetta out there or anything. I just, you know, I've always just kind of write and sung and recorded what I love. And, and at the time, uh, those songs just happened to come out. And uh, I always try to, make an album that's uh, a mixture of all, all mm -hmm. different subjects that, that blend well together. But I guess if anything on this album, it, it, I feel a little more freedom now because I'm not trying to worry about getting on radio and fitting into their uh, limitations that they put on you about what you can sing about or play or what it sounds like. And if I could just do what I want to do. So this was a little more country to me than some uh, early stuff, but my, some people might not hear that. But and I just, you know, I just wrote what I what I love and about what I love, and and uh, I was real real proud of it. And, and it probably felt good to write again. It did. It did feel good. I wrote a, a lot of songs in a short time there, and a lot of them didn't make the album. So there's quite a few more laying around. Laying there's around. more to come. What you're saying <laughs> is there's more to come. Well, there's always <laughs> extra ones laying around somewhere. Yeah. Is it true that you, when you listen to your kids talking and their friends, you get inspiration for uh, some of the f more fun, yeah. rowdy songs? Yes, I've, I've had them on every, just about every album. I think one of my uh, ones that I always think about, even when I'm singing on stage at night, I, I, a lot of times it, it reminds me, I had a song called Good Time, just a fun Friday night song that was a hit, and I spelled out the words in there on one of the G with an O, O with a D, T with an I, and M and E. And where I got that from was going to my girls' high school basketball and volleyball games for years, and the, and the cheerleaders were cheering out the school, F with the R, R with the A, F, R, A. And, you know, I, I ended up making that chorus like that, you know, so just always something. I love that. The inspiration <laughs> came from the high school basketball game. Yeah, you never know where it's going to come from. Yeah. So just to finish up, because I know, thank you for giving me this time, but how, like, at this stage in your life, how important is music to you? Well, I mean, I, it's not as important as it was in my early days. I'll be honest with you. The, you know, when you're starting out, you got that record deal, and you're writing songs and making albums, that's you're watching that chart and trying, you know, if you're consumed with it, if that's what most people are, and you and you, like any business, you kind of have to be, you know, dedicate your life to it if you want it to be successful. For so the first few years, you were 100% all the time, and then it, and as my life changed, then my priorities changed some too. Once you had children, mm -hmm. and you know you're enjoying life, and I finally had a little money where I could enjoy. You know, I didn't have anything our whole lives, and so it, it all. Uh, kind of uh, changed that perspective a little bit, but you know, at the same time, I, I've, I've always just kept believing that the songs are the important thing. I kept trying to write, and hopefully, that's been part of my longevity is being able to come up with songs. Every so you now get and the then. joy just in the pure purity of the music. I, I think so. I mean, I've it's great to be recognized at award shows and all. I mean, I've never. I always just cared about the country music awards. That's all I cared about. I wasn't worried about the Grammys or any crazy thing. You know, I just wanted country music awards. That's all I wanted. <laughs> wanted if I was going to be on any of them. But uh, and I've been blessed with a lot of awards too. Yes. You think country music is is dead or hurting? Well, I think real country music is really not part of mainstream country music anymore. I mean, uh, and I don't want to sound like an old. <laughs> bitter country singer but you know it's a different generation they they like what they like and the fans like what what they do and and there's some, still some good music out there but there's really no in my opinion there's no real real country music where i mean even though the instruments are going away you know the steel and the fiddle and i wrote a song about that on this album but it wasn't my song on that album wasn't to condemn what everybody's doing it was just my love for the music and my kind of a, it was like a 
heartbreak song. It's like a lost love song that I miss that. And that's what I was writing about. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of great artists out there now. And I just don't think there's any real country music left. I, I think there are young people, young artists that, that love th that, that kind of music mm -hmm. and that are wanting to make it and wanting to write it. But, um, and I'm not let up on the business anymore, like what happens, but I feel like they're not getting the, a shot at record labels or the radio stations mm -hmm. won't play real country music anymore. And uh, it's sad because there's a lot of fans out there. One of my favorite songs, I have to say, is your collaboration with Zach Brown. It's just, a, it's just music evolves, and I know that, but to me, I mean, I just feel like country music is different. It's, it's an America, it's American music. Mm -hmm. It's real, it came from here, it's real music. And it and it's I hate to see it start uh, becoming so diluted with that it just kind of disappears the real sound you know and I'm that's what I'm afraid's happening to it and not that there's not good music on country radio mm -hmm. it's just I just hate to see the real stuff mm -hmm. disappear completely because I think it's it's a great part of American history in me. So, um, Denise, you guys have been married for 40 years. What has been the secret to, to this lasting relationship? Um, that he's been on the road so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, just um, take each day as it comes. And um, we've had a lot of ups and downs. And um, we're separated very briefly mm -hmm. in our marriage about 25 years ago. And... Um, just keep plugging away at it. You know, when we married, it was for life, for better, for worse. And we've had a lot of better and a little bit of worse. Mm -hmm. And I know you have, um, you had your own health scare, your battle with cancer. And uh, that, that that must have been a very hard time in your, in your life and in your marriage. Um, it was. It was something I never dreamed of. I was 50 years old and perfectly healthy. And she never even gets a cold or anything. Um, <laughs> if anybody's going to get sick, it'd be me. And then she had something like that. And it was. It was. Bizarre. It was the shock of our lifetime, really. Yeah. Um, but thank goodness the treatments worked, and um, she's, just she's tough, stronger <laughs> than ever now. It's t I'm 10 years out, and um, just had to really just cling to my faith during that time because if anything will set you down it'll it's hearing that word cancer yeah and what about the beautiful song that your husband <laughs> wrote can you listen to it oh my goodness uh, I haven't sad. listened to it in so long but um, for those who don't know it was uh, when I saw you leaving yeah. in my mind and just him his emotions of what it would have been like um, had he experienced that, so it was, it was a very powerful uh, song, and um, you know, it it kind of gets me even now thinking about it. Yeah, it really is a powerful song. And now to be sitting here, um, ten years later, with your husband, and after forty years of marriage, and know that he's going through his own battle. It's a smaller one, but it's a battle. How how are y'all doing it together? Um, I think it's just, you know, we lift each other up. When I'm down, he lifts me up. When he's down, I try to lift him up. And then, you know, we've had other tragedies in our lifetime. We've, you know, my brother's suicide. We had cancer. We had our separation. And then recently, well, three years ago, the loss of our son-in-law, as you all talked about. Um, you know, you just, you're there for each other. Um, but then again, the happy side of that is... Um, we, we've had a fairy tale life in the midst of all those heartaches <laughs> and the sadnesses and the sorrows and disappointments. Um, we've lived a fairy tale life. Our, both of our daddies were blue collar workers. We, we didn't ever dream that we would have a life like we've had. And, and just for him to have affected so many people and over his 30 year career. And um, I would like to think that my faith and the book that I wrote several years ago mm -hmm. after our separation has touched some lives. Yes. And I can even see in Maddie now um, just the strength and the faith that she has and, you know, how the Lord is already using her um, to minister to other people and to comfort other people. And um, 
so yes, we've had our heartaches, but we have also had a fairy tale life and so blessed and just um, yeah. nothing but just thank thank God that um, we've had the life that we have had together. There's been a lot of joy, <laughs> a lot of joy. <laughs> A lot of joy, a lot of blessings. You can't even remember it all. <laughs> you so can't much. even remember. That's why you wrote some songs, yeah. so you can remember what it felt That's like. Right. And all of us can, too. And, and to, even to be sitting in this space in a place that I know in 2017, is that right? In right. 2017, you got to watch your husband accept his rightful place into this small group of people. I just, I, I will never forget that. I'm like, I just, we did this beautiful picture book for him, like of all the pictures from that evening and um, just, and all my children signed it and I signed it and I just said, babe, you're in the hall. <laughs> like you're in the hall forever. <laughs> Your bronze is going to be in that rotunda. And it's just for our children to see our grandchildren, our great grandchildren. It's just still can't believe it. When y'all met, you know, 42 or how many years ago? <laughs> uh, yes, 45, probably. 45, 45, probably. 45 yes. years ago. Yeah. Could you ever have imagined? No, we were kids. Mm. We were 16 and 17. <laughs> he was just out of high school. We were just kids. And even in him, I, he's said so many times in interviews, like, when we moved to Nashville, we knew nothing. We were... We were just ignorant enough to not be afraid yeah, like, to it. come here. We had no clue what we were doing. Um, so looking back on all that is just still miracle. a miracle. <laughs> and it's just yeah. a miracle. God's hand yeah. in it all. And some talent. And some talent, <laughs> yes. Yes. When you see him perform, do you, still, do you still sometimes feel like that teenager, just like in awe? Um, I do. I really do. I mean, and, and sitting in a huge arena and just looking 360 at everybody and you see 90 year old grandmothers and then you see the daughter and then you see the granddaughter and the little children and all the multi four generations together at his show. Um, it's just it's hard to, to believe that he can entertain from the youngest to the oldest. And I, I know you probably don't like the word legacy. Either one of you probably don't, I can, t I can tell. But what do you hope your legacy is? Oh, I don't know. I, I've just always admired the artists that I loved coming along that were singers and songwriters. I guess Hank Williams was always one of my favorite. The first one that I really started listening to the songwriting and I just uh, would like to be remembered as as that. You know, I'm not, I don't walk out there and jump around on stage or do anything. It's just uh, walk out there and sing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always believed that the, the music's the most important thing, the songs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's what I'd like to, I guess, if I had a legacy. And what what about, what do you think? You, what's your favorite song that he's? Written. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, now you're putting me on yeah. the spot, Jenna, because um, of course I'd love you all over again. He wrote for our 10th anniversary. So that was, that's dear to my heart and sweet. Um, you know, Remember When, yeah. of course, which journals the whole from before we were married to us uh, sitting in our rocking chairs when we were old. And I guess that's probably now, honey. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, is that now? <laughs> that's probably how Is that now when Remember uh, When? We're heading that way. We're heading that way. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but, but truly, the message of that song is that when we look back, yeah. we won't, you know, we won't regret. We, we won't want to go back. We'll just remember when. All the, all the good and all the bad, everything that's come with it. Yeah, it makes me, I mean, I'm sort of tearing up because to <laughs> me it makes me, and I'll stop that because <laughs> this is what I always do. But it also is like, don't sweat the small stuff. Like, just think of the beauty of the soundtrack of your life. Absolutely. And he'll have so many songs for our grandchildren, our great ch grandchildren to hear and to know, to know who he was, to know what was important to him, to get a little touch of, you know, our lives together through his music. And how that feels like a great gift. Yes.
Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.